And these are the different types. And why am I telling you this? Well, there's a published case report of a Japanese woman with Ehlers-Danlos type 2, and she had multiple tender nodules on both lateral thighs and the buttocks. That kind of sounds like Durkham's disease or lipidema. And then there's another uh, publication showing multiple painless and non-tender firm mobile subcutaneous nodules of various sizes on the upper extremities of a woman who had Ehlers-Danlos. That sounds like familiar multiple lipomatosis. So we're into fat disorders. <laughs> And the, this is the one I'm most interested in, the hypermobility type, or type, formerly type 3. It's autosomal dominant. That sounds like lipedema or Durkheim's disease. It can be um, variable clinically. The skin is really soft or velvety. Doesn't that sound like lipedema? Right? I mean, I love feeling lipedema women. I mean, sometimes I just... <laughs> Medical care are female, right? And females dominate lipedema. There's chronic pain. Ah, sounds like lipedema. Sounds like Durkheim's disease. Um, this pain is not it is distinct from that associated with the dislocation. So they can dislocate their joints, but this is the pain is different. Easy bruising is common. Is this starting to sound familiar? Brain fog, right? They suffer from reflux, from GERD. They have GI. God, this is really. I mean, this is like. Isn't this it? And this is um, something that uh, Laura has been talking about a lot. Studies have proven that lidocaine often works poorly or not at all in Ehlers-Danlos patients. And I think Dr. Stutz uses something different than lidocaine on his page. You use Marcaine? Provocaine. Okay. So, I mean, that's something for the, the surgeons to take note of. And it says, um, this is from the Ehlers-Danlos National Foundation. Um, when you have days when you need a nap to rest up from the effort of getting up out of the bed in the morning, you might have Ehlers-Danlos. <laughs> <laughs> so what proof, what proof do we have? I mean, okay, it all sounds good, right? And uh, I was talking to Laura, we need to go find one of these Ehlers-Danlos investigators. We need to collect a lot of DNA from lippy ladies and send it to them and say, hey, take a look at that gene. You know, one of the genes. They, they don't know all the genes, but... There's one um, gene that's popped up in a small number of the hypermobility type would be worth taking a look at. So I'm sorry you can't see that very well, but. Okay, so, oh, look at that. See, that's why you, you get paid the big bucks. <laughs> so um, this is where they injected some contrast medium into the skin. So this blob means nothing. Um, it, but it gets taken up into these lymphatics, and look how beautiful they are, nice and thin and straight. That's what a normal lymphatic looks like. So they did the same thing in a, in a woman with lipedema. So here's the blob down here, right? But what are, what's this? What are these flame-like structures here? Eventually, the dye does get into normal lymphatics, but you know what this stuff is here? It's because the tissue is so loose and expansive that the dye is just oozing out into the tissue and the tissue is letting the fluid ooze into it. There's no elasticity. There's no push to drive it into the lymphatics. You're just taking it in and holding on to it until it really becomes way too much and then it's entering the lymphatics. I think this is consistent with a connective tissue type disorder. So very low tissue resistance. So why should you wear compression? That's one of the reasons why. Because you don't have that normal elasticity and you've got to help that fluid get into the lymphatics faster. And also maybe because a little bit of pressure on the fat can retrain that fat that it really shouldn't be there. Now that's gonna take a long time for that fat to change its mind, but it's worth starting because five years from now that fat will have learned over those five years that maybe it really doesn't belong there. And, or you could put yourself in advice. <laughs> so um, this is my cartoon of differences between normal and lippy tissue. So here's these normal fat cells close together, normal size. They've got connective tissue holding them all into this nice little bundle. And any fluid that comes here goes right into that normal lymphatic. Here's big fat cells and lipedema. It collects a lot of fluid because they let it happen. They just let themselves be pushed apart from each other not as much in normal tissue. They also collect a lot of protein. They also collect a lot of cell waste. 
So the possible pathophysiology of lipedema is alterations in collagen or elastin that change the elasticity in the tissue requiring more fluid to fill the area before filling the lymphatics. That kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? The connective tissue in the blood vessels, it's weak, it's dilated. You guys probably all had low blood pressure for a long period of time, right? That's because your yeah. vessels are all dilated, they're weak. You're weak. <laughs> And they're not, they're, they're not pumping, you know, instead of pumping nice and robustly, like, like Dr. Norton told us about, it's kind of like, uh, uh. <laughs> And maybe this response to estrogen is an exaggerated response. Um, so I wanted to mention Cantheria parviflora because a lot of people are talking about it. I started a lot of people on it. It is, it, thank you. It is um, from Thailand. Uh, it's a plant extract, and it, um, it's kind of an alternative to dextroamphetamine. It activates this hormone-sensitive lipase and adipose tissue triglyceride li lipase, and that's um, confirmed in a publication this year. So it increases the amount of fatty acid that leaves the cell. It also inhibits immunoglobin E stimulate inflammation. So immunoglobin E is from allergies, so if any of you have allergies and lipidema, this, this is your supplement. <laughs> Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I don't know. It's, it's actually promoted for erectile dysfunction in men. <laughs> and it's funny that now these women are buying it and, and the people in Thailand are like, what's up with that? <laughs> All these women buying it for men. <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> so it increases free fatty acid flux from cells normalizes the fat cell and reduces inflammation. So here's dextroamphetamine. I use dextroamphetamine a lot. Um, dextroamphetamine is part of uh, Adderall. Adderall is used for attention deficit disorder. In Adderall you have amphetamine, amphetamine salts, and dextroamphetamine. It lasts a little bit longer. Dextroamphetamine is short acting so you can take it in the morning and it's pretty much so worn off by the end of the day so you can go to sleep. It binds to the beta adrenergic receptor here, activates these two enzymes, causes triglyceride to break down, and you release free fatty acid. Lots of it, get rid of it, decrease the size of that fat cell. And it also binds to the beta adrenergic receptor on blood vessels and it normalizes them back to a normal size. So I really like dextroamphetamine because I feel like I'm, I'm actually addressing the underlying pathophysiology of lipid tissue. There is a risk for blood pressure to go up a couple of points. There is a risk for um, heart rate to go up a couple of points. Um, you cannot take it if you have liver disease. You can't. I got yelled at. <laughs> so, my last slide. Treatment of, um, oh, where is she? Who am I supposed to talk to about inflammation? Someone asked me about inflammation and treating it and supplements, and there she is. So I'm just gonna say, um, like, I, when I get up from, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be you. When I get up from a chair, I get up like this, and I feel like I'm really old, and I'm in a restaurant, and people are looking at me, right? Am I gonna get that right? <laughs> so to me, when you're sitting down, things are pooling. So your, your lymph fluid is not pumping very well, and you have inflammation too. So I would think about um, Camphoria parviflora. I might combine that with selenium, which is a great anti-inflammatory, and I might add in a bioflavonoid like quercetin, or a bioflavonoid of your choice, green tea, whatever, whatever you want, whatever bioflavonoid that works for you, that you find um, that you like. So a bioflavonoid, some selenium, up to 500 micrograms a day, was the average amount that they, Yvonne, we already discussed this, was it? <laughs> Yvonne knows this, because the, the average amount in the published studies showing that it improved lymphedema was 500 micrograms a day. And then I would maybe throw on the Camphoria parviflora as well, but butcher's broom also helps lymphatics pump, so butcher's broom would also be you know, something you could try. Do you try them all at once? You, 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 some people do. Some people are very careful because they have GI problems, because they have um, Ehlers-Danlos hypermobility type and the, the gut is a lot slower in Elder's family, so you, you might want to just start with one supplement at a time. If it doesn't work for you, it's out the door. And then you can add on another. I really don't think, though, that one supplement's going to do it all. So you might need to combine a couple. Um, 
Uh, you want to change your eating pattern. Um, we talked about exercise, we've talked about CDT, we've talked about supplements, medication, psychological support, medical support, social support, and involvement. And I ask each and every one, I, I, I kind of harp on this, and I apologize, but I'm going to harp. Um, you guys are all important. We showed how one patient made a difference. You guys, look at this room full of people. We could all make a difference together. We are the FDRS, we're five people. We're five people doing a lot of work. Don't you want to join us? Yes. Don't you want to be, you know, part of our group? I, I think we, you know, you should be. If you have one skill, one little skill, like I make really good headers on Word documents. <laughs> oh, we could use that. That would be awesome. We'll take it. If, if you if you volunteer and give us your skills, we will put you to work. Right, Felicity? She said sure. I think that's all I have. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions?